We are back, baby. Bashmania 182 presented by Attack. Download the Attack app and level up. ATAC Attack on Instagram, Twitter. If you want to follow them on social, it's like having a trainer in your pocket. Can't go wrong. Download Attack. All right. It's Penn State, Iowa tomorrow night. Willie the Brain. Fellers, the Fellers, the Bill. (laughs) (laughs) How you guys doing? I just got this one on the shop. Out of the shop. Bill. What shop? I had a, a spring bill on it for a little bit, but it's back. Treasure so you off. guys, are you guys excited for Spencer Roman tomorrow? Oh yeah, it's going down. It's going down. You know the obviously every year Penn State Iowa is going to be fire and it's going to have its own. You don't even have to hype it really, um, but it kind of it kind of snowballed. It kind of took root. When I was wrestling Wisconsin and this the situation that happened, the scenario that happened where, you know, they had a couple backups in and Assad got upset by pin. And by the way, he was that's the only pin I've ever seen some of the shores not on the map. That was the quickest pin ever. But I tweeted because because it was Wisconsin and Iowa were so like um, down to the wire, I tweeted, uh, guys, make make no mistake, this is Penn State, I was a thing. Just because they're having a close one with Wisconsin, you got to look in the context of it. And then people started talking, and I, I think the hype for this one has been a week long. Like, we, it, last weekend didn't even get over, and this is starting to been, be hyped up. So, um, it's Jersey pretty, Jerry. Jersey Jerry. Yeah, yeah, I was messing with him a little bit. I was trying to mess with him, and then people were like, uh, Willie, don't be a gatekeeper. I said, bro, I, I I love the fact that he's tweeting about wrestling. At, at, at the end of the day, it's the hypothetical, the people talk about the sport. It's it's, it's good. It's great, right? I mean, that's, 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 yeah, that's... Absolutely, but at the same time, Spencer ain't bumping up. Like, <clears throat> there's one thing to say, oh, Spence, Spencer should bump up. Like, there's one thing to say, we would like that match. And another thing to say, Spencer should bump up. Spencer bumping up makes no sense to anybody whatsoever. Yeah, I don't, don't understand. Our, if you want to say that you just want to see it fine, don't say that it gives Iowa a better shot to win the duel. No. Like, R- RBY said you can see it maybe on pay-per-view. <laughs> that's where it should be if it happens. Put it on a put it on a pay-per-view card. Let, let somebody ante up for that. I mean, I, I, I saw a lot of narrative. I mean, I think this is a... Uh, a story you hear over and over, maybe like people trying to be knock Spencer a little bit. The narrative of, of well, Spencer's never beat anybody. One twenty five so weak. Um, which you know, Penn State fans, I'm gonna throw a zing to start this. Maybe like if you look at you know David Taylor's best one in college against Spencer Lee's best one in college, you can't say who's he beat. You really can't. I do think it's funny. You're right. Like I agree with you in the sense that like 125 has been weak. It's also not Spencer's fault. And I think people kind of confuse those two where it's like, yeah, the, the kid has a hundred percent bonus going back to like 2019. It's crazy. I don't, some, some of that's just people not going to the weight because he's there. It, but, it's not, it's not that he's winning. It's how he's winning. I mean, that's why, I mean, if he's winning three, two, you're not, I mean, he's winning, but you know, you're not getting near as much traction, but how he's doing it. And the level of dominance, that's that's just kind of what makes it interesting. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, he's got what seven pins now in his last eight matches. And the the non-pin was a was a four-minute tech. I mean, I haven't seen somebody get that many pins in a row since Bo did it. 2019. I mean, is yeah. it unrealistic to, is it unrealistic to say that he could pin his way to the semifinals of the national tournament or finals? I mean, at this rate, no. No, not at all. No, I don't think so. I think if Spencer too has the idea to pin and that's how he wants to win, I, I think that's very likely. I mean, I, I kind of like the, I kind of like him like letting loose a little bit, like maybe let a little bit more of his personality through and, you know, I told him that. I told him. well, that must've been the change. No, I told <laughs> him that I, I, I'm not saying, I'm not saying he's doing it because I told him to. I'm saying that after he, he he has done this, he has shown a little bit more um, of a mean streak in him. He's shown a little bit more 
uh, a personality. And I said, Hey, I like, I like it, Spencer. I like that. You're doing that. Because sometimes I think that Spencer knowing he was the face of the program, trying to be a little bit too diplomatic and, um, he's been a really good face of the program. He's been a really good spokesman, but at the same time, you know, you, you watch it and you're like, nobody's that happy and satisfied and doesn't have a chip on their shoulder at all, you know, at some point. And I think he's showing that chip on his shoulder once in a while now. And I like it. All right. So let, let's get into the dual pick. So obviously we're all picking Spencer by. Well, we're going to start. Let's not start at 25. That's kind of boring. All right, where do you want to start? Well, how does this work, anyways? I mean, I, I know they'll probably start at twenty-five, <laughs> but 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 what's the new scenario? What's the new scenario? Like, they, if you want to draw, and whoever wins the draw gets to pick, or how's that? What's the new uh, procedure? I don't know. They're going to start at twenty-five. I think Penn State always starts at twenty-five. When was the last I, time there was a Penn State duel at Penn State that didn't start I at mean, twenty-five? <laughs> wouldn't it be? I mean, if if if, if I was Cal, I'd start at thirty-three. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, it would be. So 25, I mean, what, what are you what are you going at 25 here, Brain? Well, uh, I'm you know, you're obviously taking five or six. I'm just gonna say six. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's a pin. I think it's a Spencer pin. I mean, you can't see you can't see, and this is no disrespect to Steen or anybody else, but you can't see Spencer pin number three, number five, number seven, and, and say he's not gonna pin There's glory in those rankings, by the way. I don't know. He only identifies him before the I think. <laughs> All right. 25. All right. Uh, so, so 20, 25. I'm going to pin. Not, he's not taking a pin. Yeah. You have to. Six in a row, like you just said, against what, number three and seven the same weekend last weekend? Let's see. You know, I, I think pin. First of all, fellas, you're not going, are you? No. The the top, huh? What? I was going to go to the duel, but I just flew in from Cincinnati last night, so my arms are tired. I'm going to go fly back out. Cincinnati? Yeah. Were we at the Bengals game? I was getting burrows ah. to get up for the weekend after he took out the Bills. Bash, you're not saying that uh, Cincinnati had an advantage because they were wearing white jerseys, are you? Who said that? Some piece, some, some. I uh, hate, I hate the Bengals cool. after Eli Apple. He's the biggest scumbag in the NFL. He's a scumbag. Um, all right, all right. You're, you're not going, going either, really. We know you're not going. I'm you're going. Not sure. I'm, listen, I'm telling you're you, you're not you're not so I'm telling you, actually, I felt bad yesterday because I, I bought a new computer and I'm screwing around with my computer and I'm getting my iMessages on there and it screwed up my my contacts and. I sent you a message to say, I sent you a message fellas and said, call me, but somehow it went to Thomas Gilman and Thomas Gilman called me. <laughs> did, you, did you give your phone to Thomas Gilman? No. Well, I don't know. It went to Thomas Gilman and Thomas Gilman called me. Anyway, I'm going up there right after the show. Are you wearing the, are you wearing the Canadian tuxedo or what do you wear? Canadian tuxedo? Yeah. No. Your usual blue denim like shirt with, with your, Blue, blue, and your, your blazer. Right, people, people aren't. Are you going to Penn State, Willie, or not? <laughs> I'm not. What you call it? I don't even have a denim shirt. <clears throat> All right, let's let's stick to the picks here. Nobody tunes into Bash Mania for travel plans. I've learned that. Well, listen, right. <clears throat> we're 20 minutes in. We've picked Spencer Lee to get a pin. <laughs> okay, I mean, all right. <clears throat> what? What do you want to say? No, nothing. I mean, I hate. I'd hate to have any depth to anything. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Willie, are you wearing Who's going at 33? Is Iowa going to put Teske or Schreiber out there? I think you see Schreiber. Why do you think that? I just think that Teske's been battling some injuries. I think that he had two, two pretty good wins last weekend. Um, I don't have any insight on that. I just. Well, do you think that, and I don't really have much of an opinion on it. Do they wrestle Friday, Sunday, or just Friday? They just, just wrestle Friday. Friday. Okay, well maybe it's Teske then. Um, do you I, think that one or the other, Teske or or Schriever limits bonus more? I mean, the, here's the thing. I about think Roman Tata, majors either of them. It's three or four here, right? It's three or four. We're not talking about a tech. We're not talking. No, about a... but four is important here. I mean, I think. Right. I think this is last big duel of, you know, Roman's career as a, a pen, you know. I don't know if it'll be sold out. It's at eight. I think it's eight thirty start. So 
maybe half the fans have to be home by then. I'm not sure, you know, <laughs> but I assume it's going to be sold out. I mean, if, if you would pick right now, Roman to have a, a major. Teske right, so and Roman are good friends though. So there is an element of knowing each other pretty well. I, I do think Roman gets the major regardless of who they put out, but I, I think it's four very, here. Teske's very active though too, right? So uh, part of me thinks, Roman capitalizes on when you're active. 100%. So yep. part of me thinks that um, D- Teske might be more of a bonus liability. And yeah, those rolling around, those scrambles he's been scoring a lot on, guys getting his legs, leg pass and stuff like that, probably not high percentage against Roman. Right, that's right. That's right. So and I'm Roman's go- pretty active, you know, motion wise. So okay, is he getting go any injuries still? I'm going for here. Are we all in agreement? Six, four after two. Okay. I think so. Yeah. You should label this the coin flip duel. Cause it, cause oh, when you're, let's it get really to the is. coin flip. When you get to one forty one. that's well, not a coin flip. Well, th- here's the thing. That's why, you know, there's people that the perception that Penn state's been winning and Penn state's on a roll and Penn state always wins now. Um, and so when I, you know, when people say, Oh, Iowa, Penn state's going to be great. Uh, people come out of the woodwork and say, oh, Penn State going away, Penn State, no doubt. Look at the matchups. Look at the matchups. There's no way that you can, with a straight face, say this is a comfortable Penn State next topic duel. Now, I know if Penn State wins seven matches to three or six, people are going to say, I told you so, I told you so. You cannot say that going in. There's a difference between, there's a difference between what, the expectation are the reasonable expectations are prior to a competition and what those results are. That's why we watch sports. But if you come in here, coming into the duel, you can't say with a straight face that 41, 49, 57, 65, 97, 285. There's six matches, guys. There's six matches that no, no win either to either side would be shocking. So yep. I don't get the people saying next topic 41 uh edge iowa 49 okay you're gonna go through with all your picks right now or we're gonna have a show (laughs) well i'm not making picks right now i'm trying to well you said edge iowa i'm setting the stage it's not an edge though i think i think bo barlow's best wins over a 21st ranked kid this year and historically bartlett i mean what's i just think i just think that i just think that Real is, you know, there's maybe some, I think he scores points. I think that he does well on big stages. And well, all, all, what my point is, Adam, is this is why the duel is being, this is why the duel is fire. Is because there's so many toss-ups and it's one match. I'm not saying, how many times did you see one guy who's clearly an inferior wrestler um, beat a guy who's clearly a superior wrestler, and that's why duels are wild. I, it it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't mean for somebody to win in a duel does not mean you're the better wrestler. It means you were the better wrestler in that seven minutes, and that's why duels are crazy. And so, what I'm saying in those are six matches that I listed, if either of the guy won, would your mind be blown? Would your mind be blown? No. If no. Bartlett beat or if Van Ness, I don't think. I don't think he wants. For me, 41's not a, not a coin flip, though. Well, 41 for me, Bo looks great down at 41. And similar to other weights where you're limited to your competition, Bo has not really had a tough opponent this year. He hasn't had a top 10 opponent. I what, think what I'm saying, tough. Was, his closest match was against another Penn State guy. Yeah, it hasn't been. So I don't think. Bo at 141 looks phenomenal. Real had a close win over Swiderski and a close win That's over Brock Hardy. So I this match could 100 percent in my Real, opinion, go either way. Real won a match this year in where he lost the takedown differential zero to one. So what I'm saying is you take real, I'm taking real nine four uh is a team score. But if Bartlett wins, I'm not. My head doesn't explode. I mean, Bartlett's biggest one of his career, right? Would you agree with that? It would be. Yeah, absolutely. I think Bo gets the win here. Oh, God. Get your Penn State hat off. <laughs> Who? He beat Brock Hardy by two. Brock Hardy's, listen, Brock Hardy won the Cliff Key. Listen, listen. Been, no, 
WrestleStat has no hat on. WrestleStat's prediction in this match, take it for whatever you want, is Bo Bartlett beating real 5-4. Yeah, that's You're telling me you couldn't see a 5-4 win, Bo? I could see a 5-4 win either side. Like Willie just I said. I haven't seen him get two takedowns against somebody ranked in top 10 since he's been, I mean, that's probably. He hasn't faced any top 10 opponents. I'm not year. talking this year. I'm just talking total. But I think at Bo 149 Bo versus 141, it's a little bit different. It Bo might Bo be. Willie win this match. Yeah, I'm taking real. I know Bo can win. So it's, uh, I have, I have 9-4. Great. I take I take real in the decision and and so Bash is taking Penn State. Is real going? Did your check clear? No. It's, <laughs> what's that? Oh, the bags are packed. Are we sure that real is wrestling tonight? I mean, your check has to clear first. I, according to many of them, that's according to many of them. Yeah. No. All right, one forty nine. I guess it doesn't take rate token. <laughs> <laughs> 149, Max Murrin, Shane Van Ness. Here's I think this is I think this is two similar styles. Guys wrestle hard, but it, 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 basically it's a senior against a freshman with the same styles. And I guess it's, I, I would say this comes down to third third period takedown either way. I, I, I agree. I, I don't know what the hell to make of this match. I don't think either guy shoots enough. I think they hang on the head, hang on the head, hang on the head, hang on the head. Um, Do you give? Good. Do you give a home field advantage to Shane? Like Murren's the senior, so you kind of give the experience edge there, obviously. If this was at Iowa, I think I lean towards Murren getting the win. They've both lost to Gomez this year. I, I too think Murren wrestles better at home, but I think it's gonna, I mean, it's it's also you know, it's gonna be Van Ness's. I mean, I know they had Michigan there last week, but there wasn't the magnitude of the duels a lot different, right? So you, there's also a lot of young guys in the lineup that are having the first first really big, big stage, um, you know, I don't think Iowa has historically, I mean, Iowa won to Penn State, I think maybe 2018, maybe, but I, I, uh, historically at Penn State, I'm going to be safe here. I, I think that Van Ness can win. I'm taking Mirren because he's the senior. I'm just gonna say I'm, I'm taking Mirren because he's a senior as well, and that makes the score 12 4 for me. Yeah, I'm taking Van Ness. I agree with Russell Stett. Their prediction 5 3. I like that. I like that score. I think this this is gonna be a very I think a late third period takedown is a very good prediction. Last week, Bryce Jordan Center, these three freshmen at Penn State did really good, kind of wrestled through those jitters. I think we see that again. I mean, the other thing I, is, is can Mirren, when we see Mirren have success in the past, you know, like last year, a lot of people, people are complaining after the ball, about the bout at the ballpark. You know, Mirren, he was really committed to and diligent on getting that one minute right time we've seen against G Feller. I think that's something he has to get back to really committing to the ride that we haven't seen thus far from. Shane quietly does that too. Shane O'Raja. Um, and I think that Shane, I think Shane looks like a guy that watched college wrestling for a long time and said the physicality, the hanging on the head, the pressure, pressure, pressure is what wins at the college level. And I think he's doing that, but I think he needs to peel off. You're, you're not going to gas Murin, right? Um, I mean, you're not going to bully Murin. I, I think that Shane in general needs to fire off more attacks. And I think, um, specifically for this match he needs to create as many opportunities as he can because i think he's probably a little bit more athletic okay. this would be a big win for Merritt. i mean he, he's lost three all three top 10 matches this year this would be a good win for him if he can beat shane on the road at penn state i think but i, I do bet. think shane wins i mean i'm gonna take Mirren. 12 uh, 12 4 so let's go to 57. What do you think, Willie? I mean, they're pulling Levi. I mean, I, I've heard that Haynes is having a hard time making 57. I've heard a lot of things. Uh, I, you know what? I call BS on that. I call BS on that. There, there's, He's having a hard time making it now. Like, where's he fit the lineup going forward then? There, there's, there's, yes, but here, I'll give you a quote of his. Uh, there's a lot, there's been a lot of stuff made about Levi and his size and where, and his growth and where he fits. And, and even by me, like when he was a junior in high school, I'm like, I think he's going to end up being like a 74, right? Well, he didn't, 
he didn't really grow that much since then. And he was on camera last week saying, and he said, I walk around at 65. It's not a hard cut, but I would eventually like to move to 65. Okay. If you walk around at 65, you, that's not even a cut to 57. I don't want to hear about, I don't want to hear about uh, it being a tough cut. If you walk around at 65 and you wrestle 157, that's not even a cut. That's just like an extra workout. And so it, he, I, he's going to go. And I, I think Kobe, I think Kobe is a problem for everybody. I think he's going to, over the course of his career, pull some upsets and, and be a boomer bust guy. He's going to, he's going to, I like I, the same thing. I think about Pinto, he's going to beat some big names, but he's going to have some weird losses. I think that's what Kobe is. I'm going to take Levi here, but I know that Kobe could win this match. It's, so it's, I, I have it, a tool. If you look at the strengths of the Levi, I mean, that win he had against model was impressive getting the leg. He scored that many takedowns. And the thing I was super impressed with last week, I know it was an overtime, but uh, Lewin had him dead to rights five or six times getting his legs. And he did an extraordinary job actually getting his legs back. Um, but Kobe gives up his legs a lot. And it's been, when, when Levi gets to the legs, his finish percentage is really high. I don't like this matchup at all for Iowa. I think this can get out of control, out of hand, in a hurry. Yeah. Like, I, and, and, but you know, it's also the first time you're feeling Seabrex. So, He's got some funk that you've never felt before. Funky. That's always the dynamic. Um, I think, I think, I think he, Levi's a favorite here. I mean, just, just watching last week. I mean, of course, Pete Rod number one, but a lot, lot of giving up his legs. Um, well, I try to, I try to pump the brakes a little bit. I mean, people were super hyped about Facundo and Levi last week against Michigan. And it's true. They're coming. They're going to be contenders. They're going to be contenders. But where they stack up right now, I don't know. Um, so you guys both, you kind of skipped over, though. You definitely both think they're pulling yeah. Levi's red shirt. I mean, if you're going to listen, if, if those even think about pulling it, they're going to pull this duel because it's just in a, I mean, if, if you're looking at Penn State, the big picture, do they, on paper, do they really need Levi to win the national title of the state tournament? Probably not. Oh, I, I think even. No. I think Levi wants to go. I think Levi wants What's to Russell? go. I think Levi, I, I think there was confirmation with the win over uh, Luan, and I think he goes 100%. I do think, Willie, I think I've seen you talk about it recently, that they need to change the rules so that the any year red shirt can wrestle okay. five matches. Now, if that rule was in play, and I, I hate that it's not in play, I hate that they went through Listen, I understand rules have been in place for a hundred years and that's the way they are. Right. But then when you go and tinker with the rules, when you go and tinker with the rules and make, okay, red shirts can wrestle, but they can't wrestle and attach, but they can wrestle five dates and you tinker with rules and make changes and then fail to see the benefits of other adjustments like anybody in any grade that's red shirting can have five dates and remain in red shirt, they, they missed a huge opportunity there because, of, and, and here's why, I mean, you, you guys know why, but how it applies to this duel. If that was the case, then Spencer and RBY are in play. Why? Because Iowa could put in Drake. They're not listen, but, but still, I don't, I don't, I think the reason it was put in just red shirt freshman only is because you really can't commit. You really can't compete in opens anymore because you can't compete unattached under the new like academic thing for, for wrestling. I think that's what was like the consolation for these guys to get matches in the first semester. Yeah. I, I understand that, but they, that was self-imposed. They put that rule in there. Well, yeah, because the, the attrition rate wrestling is the worst of any sport in college. <laughs> Yeah, I just think it's – I mean, they do it in football. You can play in, like, four games and still be redshirt. I mean, it's just – it's just ridiculous. Like, when – I don't know. When Iowa wrestled um, Nebraska, wouldn't it be cool if we saw Murin versus Ridge? But under these rules, you can't. So, I think that Levi goes – I'm giving the edge to him on paper. It's like the third match in a row where I think there's an edge and it's very slim. 
but I won't go. I don't, I don't agree with the slim part. Like I, I just think matchup wise, I think this. I just think that this could be bonus points for Penn State. Okay, I, okay, you're right. I think you're right. However, let me let me adjust my phrase. I think Kobe's dangerous. I think hundred percent. Yeah, that's fair. <clears throat> I'm going Levi too. Weird. Yeah, I mean, all, the, all, the, all, the, all the all the coin flips. Bash, just put a blue shirt on. It's fine. What? Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? <laughs> so I have it. What do I have at 12 7? 12 7 at the break. How's Facundo graded fifth? Who knows? And Kennedy's 14th. Uh, well, it's because Facundo beat Lua, uh, Amin. Cameron Amin. That's why. It's just. Uh, it's just lack of, and his only loss was to David Carr. It's just lack of um, top ten competition. Yeah, it's a lack of opportunity. It's not really just not enough data on him, right? So, uh, Kennedy... so is Caliendo ranked ahead of? Is he rated fourth then? Because he beat uh, Griffith. Well, the problem with that is Caliendo has all losses. Facundo doesn't. Okay. Although I, I think Facundo's ranking makes sense. He lost. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Oh, fellas, get your bill out. There's a big dough in my front well, yard. Facundo, I don't think so at all. Look at look at what's returning at 65. You think Facundo, Facundo also lost last year. Facundo lost to Caleb Fish, who we beat this last week. And OK, so let's we're at 65 now. We're talking Kennedy and Facundo. And this is a major toss up for for people. And. Again, just like Levi, great win against Luan, but Luan is notoriously a low scorer. I mean, I mean, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, no, Levi beat Luan, right? And it's, it's a, so just like, just like Levi and Luan, I'm like, okay, Levi's a thing, but pump the brakes on just, it was just one match. Same thing with Facundo and Amin, right? Facundo wrestled, Two matches last weekend. One went to overtime. So he wrestled about. No, they both went to overtime. Yeah, they both did. So he he wrestled like 16, 17 minutes. You know how many takedowns he got in those 16, 17 minutes? Two. One. Oh, one. Yeah, one. One. Okay. So we know he has a defense. He has to be able to score. Um, he has to learn to be able to score a little bit more often. And his thing is good defense. He gets in on shots, but it, he gets in on shots in ways that aren't um, – he gets in, but then he's not in a great position to finish. And so um, I'm taking Kennedy. I'm taking What Kennedy. was Kennedy um, – Hamidi's match last week? I missed that one. It basically looks like a mean – it looked like a mean and Hamidi's match where um, Hamidi was ready for the roll at the end of the match. He got the leg, and – Stuffed it and scored, and he got leg passed by Hamidi and taken down. I, I think that Hamidi's Hamidi's funk and and creativity gave Kennedy problems. That's what I saw, right? Other than that, um, Kennedy stayed in there with him pretty good, and I don't know that Facundo has that rolling around scrambling ability. But what, uh, what we see, what we see out of Kennedy historically, like he came out against um, uh, Bronco that had a, a good win over Peyton. Um, uh, the guy from West, uh, Peyton, what's the guy from West Virginia? Peyton Hall. Peyton Hall, right? And and he scored points right away. We didn't see that last week. Maybe it's because of Hamidi, maybe not. But and we've seen it against him against Facundo, who's number one. I know that was two years ago now. He came out and scored right away. Like if it's a slow scoring first period, it, I'm at the end of the first period. Like if you're doing DraftKings live odds, if there's no takeouts in the first period, I'm, I'm it goes heavily to Facundo. I agree with that. I agree with that. But I think that Kennedy is going to create more opportunities. Like Facundo will probably be in on a leg three or four times. Kennedy will take eight attacks. And so. In but, a point, but Facundo does a good job keeping space where a lot of Kennedy's attacks come from ties, right? There's going to be some strategic things here. Like I don't, I don't really see either, either one of them riding each other. No. Nope, I don't either. I mean, it really comes down to this. 
does Kennedy score in the first period or not? If it comes down to a score late in the match or in the overtime, you take Facundo. I agree with those kind of running odds. And, and if that's how it plays out, um, I, I get, if I'm a Penn State fan, I get more confident if it's a scoreless first period. Uh, that being said, I'm going to go Kennedy, and which makes it for me 15 7. Yeah, I'm going to go Facundo. Absolutely. I, I think Facundo just had a nice top 10 win at home. We haven't seen it out of Kennedy yet. I think Kennedy. That's not true. Abs- Bronigo was top 10. Who? Bronigo back to the Midlands. Bastion don't even know who Bronigo is. I must be blanking on that match. Illinois, kid, that. Illinois kid. Yeah, I don't remember that match at all. Um, yeah, I'll, after seeing Facundo last weekend, like you said, Willie, 16 minutes of wrestling. I think he looked looked really, really good. Call it Penn State bias or not. I give the edge at home to him. But both those like matches if, could win, both those this, matches could the other way, though, right? Agreed, 100%. I also think if this was in Iowa, like, fellas, when we did the pre- last year, I was giving more edges to Iowa guys because it was at Iowa. If this match is at Carver-Hawkeye, I think I pick Kennedy here. At Penn State, I'm taking I'm taking Facundo. You got three freshmen and I mean basically three three first year guys in the lineup for Penn State right in a row. It's a yeah. it's it's a different. I mean I know they wrestled Michigan there last weekend, but this is a different. different it, this environment. is huge, definitely. Yes, however, um, Penn State gets better in big moments. That's sure, why yeah. I'm going with them. I there's if, there's if there's a team in the country. Who gets rattled in big moments? It ain't Penn State. So let's go to seventy four. These two, these two mats. I mean, I think they're both obviously favored uh, Penn State, but I don't see Starachi. I don't see Starachi scoring bonus points on. I mean, so I was, I was just going to bring up Russell Stat has Carter and Aaron both getting majors here, which is so. Do you guys? Obviously, everybody thinks Spencer gets the pin. The question at a lot of these weights, <clears throat> Roman, Carter, Brooks, which I think we all pick all three of them. There's a, there's a question there about bonus points. Are there any matches you guys think there's going to be bonus points for Iowa if they win, except for 25, obviously? No. No. Uh, and I don't give... Uh, I really like the fight that Nelson had against Labriola. I don't give Starachi bonus points here, but I do give AB. Yeah, that's fair. I, th- I think Brooks gets a major. Um, He's never majored before, but I can. I mean, you could see that definitely. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, Carter's just, low key this year. He's got ninety percent bonus. Um, only one match that was non-bonus this year. Julian Broderson, right? Yeah, that was a 5-1 win. That was the only one that wasn't bonus. I, just, I mean, that was his closest. I mean, I know he's a two-time national champ. Uh, probably one of the toughest like, overall Nelson, competitors. Nelson's hard. Nelson's hard. That was hard to wrestle. I mean, keep in mind, remember Nelson Nelson had that lead on Aaron Brooks two years ago in the in the Big Tens. I mean, not saying that's going to happen either, but this is a oh, this is yeah, a heat fight. At- his defense is Nelson's good. Track record. Look at Nelson's track record. He just wrestled Labriola to a three-two match. He lost three-one last year to Hayden Hydley. Uh, he he had a lead one time on Aaron Brooks. Um, I I don't. I Carter Strachey might be my favorite wrestler in the game. I love him, but I don't see major here. I agree with that. I go decision Penn State. Yeah, I I'll. I think Carter wins. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be right on the edge of a major or not a major. I don't think it's like a, I don't think it's a, as close as the Broderson match. I think it's more, it's going to be like he's a point or two away from a major. Can he get it or not? Mm, I don't know. I, yeah, mean, I, I mean, I can see five, two. Something like Nelson's, that. Nelson's hard to score on. Super hard to score. Um, so if you give seven, seven, 14, what do I have? 14. I think, I think, 14, I think Brooks, 14. I think this is a real, you know, Asado's 14 to one got pinned last weekend. This is a match. Like it could be, it could be major or who knows what happens. I mean, where's Abe Asado's head going to this? You know what I mean? I, I, I just think um, Aaron Brooks is heavily favored. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, we seen him get pinned last weekend. <laughs> 
you know, uh, I just think what's it, it, if the scenario plays out the way I have, and it won't because uh, that's that's why we watch wrestling. Crazy stuff happens. Um, but if Penn State is trailing, and you're Aaron Brooks, and you're at home, I think you try to put it on. I think you try to put it on, and and I think that that was, that was good insight there. The way the way I the way I see it, I, I was leading at this point. You guys remember the Carter um, Kemmer match at Big Tens? Mm-hmm. Carter no. or <laughs> Carter. Kemmer, Carter Kemmer at Big Tens. Kemmer won that. Kemmer medical forfeit. <laughs> Kemmer. Yeah, that was after his shoulder blew out when he wrestled the guy from Nebraska. Oh, yeah. last year. Yeah, Dude. last year. We'll start about medical forfeit. Two two years ago, Kemmer won seven two. Yes. No, I, I was looking at Carter versus Iowa, and I think it all, I mean at the, at the end of the day, I think it all comes down to heavyweight. All right, well, well, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So, you guys lean decision Carter. I'm, I, decision Carter, and I'm going Major Brooks. That's what I'm going. I'm going right. fifteen fourteen. Iowa leads going into ninety seven. How do you have it, Bash? Score I mean, wise, I have no clue. He has you have no clue because you just, you just went straight blue. <laughs> it's something six. <laughs> it's something six. <laughs> you just pulled the lever for all Democrats. Boom. Blue. The funny thing is, is it's like, and obviously, yes, I'm a Penn State fan. I have a Penn State bias. But all these picks, it's not like there's, oh, you're stupid. You pick Penn State stupid. here. No, I'm saying like somebody listening. nine to one. I'm just saying somebody listening is going to say about one of my matches. Oh, how like it's, it's going to be hard if you're objective to say, how could you possibly pick Penn state there? The matches you guys are picking aside from 25, you've, you've said the two matches or three matches that you guys are picking Iowa. It could go either way. It's not like, I don't think any of your individual picks are. It is funny grouping them all together. I just think for them, I think there's only five sure matches. I think it's, 25, 33, 74, 84, and then you have six coin flips. Okay. So, so Brooks by major, I think, too. Will you think Brooks by major? I think Brooks majors them, and I think it's uh, – All right, 15, so Warner, Warner, Dean. 15, oh. 14. I have 15, 14. If it would be that, that Penn State sweep the last two. Who does? So this is – Under my scenario, with my picks, Penn State needs to sweep the last two. So this is where it gets interesting because wrestle stat, and I don't understand this algorithm, but oh, now, now you're against it. It's not big. No, I'm not. Out. I'm not for or against it. I just don't understand. Like, so wrestle stat has Jacob Warner over Max Dean five, four. And then underneath it, it says verse opponent, Jacob Warner, oh, and two. And Ver- Max Dean is two and oh against Warner. So it's just an interesting pick. I think this is a hundred percent a coin toss. The last two times they wrestled was three, two, at NCAA's and eight three last year at the duel. This is a coin flip. I'm gonna pick Dean because I'm a Penn State fan, but I think this is a coin flip match. I think it's a coin flip match. Um, you know, there was Dean beat him close. Got him in the bone earth last year for four at the end, right? Dean beat him close. But there was one time where where it was a close match sort of opened up. It was it was at the bow and arrow match where it was a duel. He got the turn for fourth. Year. It was yeah. It was. But Warner was leading before that, right? It was like two. and gave up a takedown and a turn at the end. So right. six. So points. the score was a little bit misleading because he got a late turn. But they've both been close. Um, I'm going to take Dean at home, and um because he's 2 and 0 against him he's got the job done doesn't matter if it was close or not i mean it's a coin flip match but you go the guy that's 2 and 0 and Warner's not wrestling great right now he's not wrestling i, I a, lot, a lot of iowa fans are not even giving warner like they're taking max dean next topic i don't think it's a next topic match and no, I, don't I don't think, think it's a next topic at all is, i don't think that warner's wrestling as bad as what the hawkeye fans are making it out to be that being said you do, i mean people want to say well Warner lost. He's not wrestling this, right? He shouldn't have lost to that guy. I mean, Max lost to Ethan Laird, zero time All American. Okay. So they both got, they, Max lost to Cam Caffey last year, right? So there's, um, there's pros and cons on each side. That being said, the matches have been close. They both went 
Dean's way. Dean's at home. Dean beat Mesita too, right? Dean did no. Yeah, 4 1. I didn't say it. No, did they wrestle the no, duels? Couple, last month. They wrestled at collegiate duels. Max won four to one. Which for uh, me is impressive. Like, here's the thing. Like, Warner's kind of same thing. Like, if you look at his track of victory last year in CAs, is he was getting riding time. He got turns, right? I think the Mac components probably uh, negated wrestling Dean and maybe goes even advantage Dean there. Warner has to get a takedown. I mean, it's again, you can't wait to the end and try to like sneak one at the end. But on, on the flip side of that, it's kind of a catch 22. It's like, like he beat Schultz the first time he ever beat him was he turned him right. Um, lost him at big tens, but we've also seen, you know, him get a lead. He's got, he's got to score a takedown first period. Period. If, if it goes second period, same, same thing as Kennedy match. If yeah. it goes second period, zero, zero, it's, it's not looking good. But Warner has become, or I mean, I guess he's been this way for a while, really, against elite guys. Is he, he's he's very counter reliant. So if you're Dean and you take attacks, you maybe take less attacks, and if you do, you take really safe attacks. Um, but yeah, I'm going Dean. So that you know makes it seventeen fifteen, which for me makes a winner take all heavyweight badge. I agree with that. Me and Feller, our picks are exactly the same, Feller. And then I'll and I'll and I'll take Cass in the finals, Ooh, or so in, the, in the final match. So Feller's has the Hawks winning. 18, 17. And that's not being Homer. I mean, there's obviously. I think I think fifty seven could. I also think fifty seven could be a major for Penn State. And you go eighteen eighteen, they win on criteria, right? Yeah. Uh, and and Bash, you got Dean. Yeah. And you have Penn State winning forty-eight to six, correct? <laughs> Something to six. And, yeah. and here's why. And here's why I have cast over Kurt Fleet is like, obviously we've seen the match earlier this year where Kurt Fleet turned the tide against them. I just think with the duel on the line, uh, we've just seen historically sometimes pressure gets to Kurt Fleet, and it, it, some situations that. He's clearly the better wrestler and just makes some bad decisions sometimes, overwhelming, yeah. anxious, whatever. I and said, um, I just think I, that doesn't mean that I'm saying that, oh, you know, that's being a homer pick. I just think, I think this is a high emotional match. If it comes down to the duel on this, I'm going Cassiope. I, I don't think you have to be an Iowa fan to have that pick. I mean, Cassiope has beat Kirk a number of times. But again, Cassiope can't stand around. Yeah. Again, it's the, this, it's the same thing on all three of those matches. When Cassiope went out and scored, went to that body lock last year, and then Kirk Fleet started to get a little bit maybe desperate, uh, got some situ- positions he didn't want to be in. Cassiope capitalized on it, and then he rode him and kind of got out of hand. He's down. You know, if Cassiope's not attacking in the first period or Kirk's having a lead, I know it's probably like we'll state in the obvious, but that first period for, for uh, 49 or 65, 97 in heavyweight and even 49 are huge. Tell you what, you know, at the top of the show, we said, what weight will they start at? And I sort of poo pooed it. Well, they yeah, asked what I'm saying. Start at 25 and this and that. Listen, Kirkfleet, Kirkfleet has lost several, several matches where I think he's the better wrestler. And I think he lost it because of poor decision making and and it's tough i'm not i'm not poo-pooing uh kirkfleet it's it's pressure packed situations but he pretty much blew the match in the duel he pretty much blew the cassiope match no cassiope won the match in the duel he blew the match in big tens big time yes but kirkfleet had a takedown in the duel and then he went upper body with cassiope twice and Cassiope won both positions. Like, why are you doing it? Then at the All Star Classic, when it appeared like Kirk just completely separated, double five him. That was a, the duel was a double five prime match. <laughs> uh, but when when Kirk Fleet appeared to for a second, we're watching. We're like four minutes in, and we're like, okay, Kirk has separated from Cassiope. Kirk again, kind of stumbled and and gave Cassiope an in an in in that match and it didn't turn out Cassiope didn't end up winning that match but then last week Kirk takes 
what I think was a sort of sloppy shot, and he gets beat by Paris. Um, coupled with the fact that, okay, so Kirk several times has made mistakes in tough in tough bouts against multiple opponents. Cassiope is on this string of going down to the last match. You have to win, or our team loses. And Cass- going in, in, in uh, Wisconsin. Right, Cass is a veteran. Mariana Rivera, he's he's a closer. We it's it's Cass, it's your bust, and we need you. And he gets it done. And what I'm saying is, I think Kale knows that. I would not be surprised if Kale preferred not to end at 285. And the difference in those matches, what, like what last matches, year, <clears throat> when you say Cassiopeia's the closer. But against who? Just when the just just when it's on the duels on the line, you got to win. Yeah, but I mean, who's he wrestling when they're on the line? Well, Hilbert's not bad. He's Hilbert's not bad, bad, but it's not like. I think he's just more talking about this pressure situation. It built up the whole time. It's already a big duel. You have a big opponent. And- I mean, listen, you're 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 two and one against Kirkfleet, and you have a track record of performing under pressure. Three and one, actually. Yeah, three and zero, oh, and then All Star was one. Three and three one. And the difference in those matches is this, though: when Cassiope stood around in the All Star and kind of let Kirk Fleet get space and dictate the action, Kirk Fleet was comfortable in space; he could pick his spots. When Cassiope pressured him, kind of like we seen last week in Paris, kind of overwhelmed him a little bit. That's when I think he, he's probably made some Ill, ill-advised decisions. So basically, for me, you watch this whole show and and. I don't know if I was very informative because I had the duel coming down to heavyweight and it's a coin flip match. So I basically got nothing for you. But uh, look at the, you want to talk about politician come out there. You see no, that come out fast? No, what are you, I'm talking, I'm taking Cassiope. I'm taking Cassiope in so, 18, 18, 18, 17. Okay. I will win. Okay, I'm also saying that I have zero confidence in that. Yeah. No, I, I think Kirk gets it done here. I think that he, him being the number one guy, I think, was built up pressure. He was the number one guy. That's gone. He lost to Mason. He came back. I know Kitty wrestled last week wasn't that great, but he tacked him, beat the crap out of him. And I think some of that pressure is off. You want some to talk about that... pressure against a duel against Iowa? It's on you? But that you guys are... Doing? Okay, so let me ask you this. If the if the duel's not on the line... If if Penn State's up by ten going to the last match, does that change your pick? Yes. So you yeah. think if it's a close duel, Cassiope gets the win. If the duel's not on the line, you give it to Kirk. He just changes the dynamic of everything. It definitely changes the, the dynamic. I, I'm. I tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if Kale does not want to end with two eighty five. Willie, what about the question I just asked, though? Um, if it's not, if the duel's not on the line and Cass wrestles Kirk, I mean, it's, I I think the match is a toss up, regardless. I think the match is, I mean, let's just look at it. It's the Cass is three and one against them. Yeah. I, I see b- both sides. I don't think there's a wrong argument. Kirk got the last win. Kirk also looked flat against Mason. You know, I, I get both sides of the argument. And I know for those keeping score, I just picked nine straight Penn State wins. I do think there's going to be an upset in at least one of those. Sure, I think there's what... a lot of close matches and it's going to be. There's I think there's like seven unranked guys in this duel, six or seven or undefeated guys. It's a lot of and there's at least a couple head to heads in there. There's five NCAA champs. It's, it's going to be great. Bo beats, if Bo beats real, if if uh, Van Ness beats Murin, if Kobe beats Levi, everything gets shifted, right? The the, the energy, the the. I don't know if you want to call it strategy, but the, the the temperature in the room changes, right? As a Penn State fan, I wish this duel was at Rec Hall. I have no. Why, why is that? I think it's a harder place to wrestle. It's louder. 
it's uh, there's a bit more of you're on top of the guys. Like the Tom, fans are on Tom, top Tom, of. Tom said yesterday his press conference that at the Rice Jordan that they move those chairs right about one foot on. He goes, it's interesting. Yeah, from from the visitor standpoint, they're right on top of you. Yeah, I I think Rec Hall personally, I think Rec Hall is more of a home advantage than Bryce Jordan. Just the way the arena is, I just I think Rec Hall. The best school I've ever gone to was Penn State, Ohio State, five years ago, six years ago, whenever it was. That Penn State got the that Penn State got the 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 win. Nolf was injured. That was best duel that that environment there's always favorite. there's always drama i mean there's always a big thing this you know duel like two years ago is roman and, and DeSanto with when he injured default or defaulted out right last year we had shoe gate right again <laughs> took off the shoe <laughs> uh there'll be no there'll be uh we had this uh Starachi and camera where they rewarded the two then they took away the two um there, there's going to be some high energy here there's no doubt but i think there's Mutual respect on both sides. I think both people uh, understand this duel is what wrestling's all about. Oh, yeah. The 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 amount of viewers that will watch it will be huge. This is the highlight of, of the regular season wrestling for all teams wrestling period. I think I saw somewhere that only three of these matches have taken place before. Really? Yeah, you have a, you have a bunch of new you have a bunch of new yeah, I'm on both sides, there's a bunch of new guys in there. So who, I think who, the final three are the only ones that have happened before. Correct. Wow. That's interesting. The first seven, 25 through 74, have never happened before. And a lot of them, like, these are matches, especially like you look at Bo and Real Woods. They're ranked two and four. You got um, Facundo and Kennedy. You've got Shane and Mirren. A lot of these matches could happen again at, like, Big Tens or something. Maybe NCAAs. Like, it's fun to see them. This, now. Is, the, this is the dynamic, though, that, like, you know, these – these as Willie calls them mouth breathers get on these tyrants about oh this is why they need to move the national title to a dual meet format. If you put these same lineups in in a tournament format right now and say okay project right now how how the lineups are, you're probably looking at 50 60 point difference. Look at the discrepancy. Like we're going back and forth. The whole world, the whole wrestling community is so amped up for this duel, and yet look at the discrepancy. Between this, that's going to be great. And the projected team points right now where there's a big gap. It's, it's, it's night and day between um, – it's night and day between dual format and tournament format. They're just two different animals. Well, it, it's, uh, it's also like the duels are great for the time being. There'll, have, there'll be some sound bets on Monday, but then afterwards, like I saw the both of you guys, people forgot who, who won <laughs> – Big Ten tournament last year. It wasn't Penn State. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then you go to NCAAs and there, there's a different gap. Um, Is this the biggest gap or differential we've seen in a one-two as far as how close it could be for a duel and how wide points are at tournament? When you look at NCAA, the NCAA scoring, though, right? Like, like RB, if you had 10 seventh-place finishers on a team, right, you have a, collectively a good team. It would be a great dual team, right? RBY and one other guy that gets maybe seventh, I'll score them at the national tournament. Mm-hmm. I mean, a guy that gets seventh place, an All-American, hell of a feat, they're scoring an average like three and a half, four points, where first is 23, 24 points. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's why if you look at Penn State, and I've said this some purple in the face, so, what they've done a great job is, 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 is Kayla's done a great job having five guys that are going to be top three the NCAA tournament and he has the next wave of guys coming through. And when that wave gets through, good luck. Yeah. That, but that's, I, that's often a criticism, but uh, that's easier said. But the year I won, it was the same difference. So they had five guys, what, four or five guys in the finals. Plus the, four in the finals, plus the Sano to third. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the mantra that you need 10 guys to win at the NCAA tournament anymore from a team race is, is not correct. It's not. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh-uh. Hey, but Bash. Here comes the spoil to Bash. He's What's coming up, right boys? in with his Hawkeye Wrestling Club shirt, his black and yellow colors. Izzy. What's up, fellas? We went through our pick. What is your picks? What is your picks for this Penn State Iowa duel? You know what? I'm just checking into my flight, baby. I'm getting ready to head out. 
to Penn State State College, baby. And you, know what, be, hey, and you know what I'm going to be repping, baby? Oh, <laughs> these colors right here. These colors don't bleed, baby. Hey, um, you, know, you know, going back to – it was it's kind of like two against two now because I remember like last year about this time, last year about April, the, the two on the left were, were saying about, you know, Real was going to go to Penn State and then I was swooped in. You know, hey, listen, hey, hey, man, if Real was at Penn State, Bash might have picked him. Hey. Oh, he was at Penn State, Bash would have picked him for a major. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We know the rules. Hey, listen, fellas, I just wanted to jump on quick. Say what's up. Izzy, dude, give fun. us, give us, the run through. Be what's epic. the keys to the duel, Izzy? Give us your picks real quick. Go 25 through heavy. Uh, 25 pin, Spencer Lee. Um, it's going to be interesting that 133-pound uh, weight test, they're such good friends, right? So Teske and Bravo Young are homies. They were in Chicago this, this summer together. Just depends, you know, is uh, Brody Teske going to roll over for him or is he going to fight like a son of a gun? You know, that's really the question. And uh, that's a bonus points. That's two or three bonus points right there. That'll be interesting. You know, Real Woods is a real man. So he's going to go out there. And um, Bo Bartlett struggled on the bottom before, too. So he better be able to get up if he wants to go, you know, if he wants to exceed his expectations on his own. I like Bo Bartlett, though, too. I'm cool with all those guys. But I'm an Iowa guy, and let's be real about it. Real Wood's going to win there. Van Ness is a stud. Um, that's a toss-up. I think 49, 57, 65, those three matchups right there are toss-ups. Now, I'm not going against – I'm not talking down on Bo Barley, but I, I, I'm i a Real Woods guy. Let's be real there. So um, 149, 57, 65 are going to be huge. Bucundo's a son of a gun. We're in uh, Penn State. We're in their house. It'll be interesting. I'm thinking – um. You know, Jacob Warner's going to come out like a a ball. Who you got there? Who you got at? Who you got at sixty five? Kennedy or Facundo? I mean, I mean, listen, I I got to take Kennedy. That's just the rules, right? Um, but <laughs> what about fifty seven? What about fifty seven? Levi Haynes against Kobe Seabrook, knowing that Seabrook gives up his legs maybe a lot, and Levi's pretty good when he fishes and gets to the legs. Seabrook's got got big old balls on him, and he can do it. He can do some things that other guys can't do, right? So, so I would say this: I will take. I'm taking Iowa for the duel, guys. 18-18. I think Spencer Lee's going to have the only pin. Um, but also, I've seen Penn State roll. I had a really good team um, in high school, and we were supposed to have really good matchups. But our guys came through. Our coaching staff came through. Our preparation came through. And we blew a lot of those teams out. So as much as I'm an Iowa homer here, um, you know, I could definitely see the duel going, you know, 26-13, something like that all. So I could definitely, um, I got a lot of respect for Penn State, got a lot of respect for those guys in that elite level mindset. Um, I'm thinking, eight, like I said, 18-18 Hawks, or um, it could get ugly and I might sneak out the back door. I had an 18-17, Fellers had an 18-17. Uh, real quick, are you taking, because we spent a lot of time on this, um, we were decided, uh, uh, we went back and forth. Are you taking Kirk or Cass? I'm taking Cassiope. I'm taking Cassiope only because I, I feel like that that first duel of the year, uh, that all-star duel was a good match. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Cassiope was trying some new things out there. I think he was trying to work on some, some growth that he had over the summer. And I think maybe it backfired a tad. Um, so I think that um, Cassiope is going to tighten it up. He's going to bring a hell of a hand fight to him. Um, he's going to bring a, a, a fight to Kirkley. Hopefully Kirkley takes a bad shot like he did on Mason Paris. You know, he kind of put his head down against Mason and Mason kind of, you know, won there. So if that Kirkley shows up, uh, I'm taking Cassiope all day. Well, I said that it comes down to heavyweight and it's, it's an all or nothing at the heavyweight. Kirk under pressure has not done well historically. Like the more pressure gets to him, that. I would say that's probably when he hasn't been at his best. Now, if, if, the, if the duel's out of hand by that thing, I think the match changed drastically. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. You know, you just you just know he's got an elite level staff, an elite team there, right? So, you know, we don't want this we don't want this one to be his coming out party of under pressure. You know, if you're an Iowa guy, right? Like, yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Kirk Fleet, you know, he sometimes he gets a little tight, you know, and doesn't do what he needs to do out there um, under pressure, but. You never know. Don't put a lot of pressure on a guy like that. He might pop and explode. <laughs> Izzy, when, Tom, you, when do you get into Penn State tonight? I get in early in the morning. I'm on the first flight out. 
Izzy Martinez, Clay Guida's coming in the house. Corey Bugs coming, baby. We're coming fully equipped. All the Hawkeye fans are coming. We're ready to go, baby. He <laughs> wants. Hey, let me ask you something. What's up, buddy? Who was the roommates? Was it? It was you, fellers. Was it was Mark- me, fellers, Paco. We had Mark- Todd, we had Todd Manili in there for a while. Was Mark Perry in there? Oh, we he, 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 Mark Perry was there. <laughs> What an all-time guys? roommate. I was just crew. with Mark Perry in France the other day. We were just in Nice, France. Um, we were out there with Sunkiss Kids Wrestling. Um, it was an unbelievable experience. Man, Kennedy Blades up 8-0 on the Olympic bronze in like 50 seconds. Boom, 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 boom. You know, and um, you know, old girl tied her up, showed her she's a woman, threw her on her head, and didn't let go, you know, and and it was a good learning experience for Kennedy. And um, it was just awesome. Mark Perry's the man. He's running. He's he's on these girls. He's on the guys. You know, he's got a, a disciplined regimen going with those guys. And uh, he has a great relationship with his athletes um, down there. So it was really, really fun. Well, I'll tell you what would have been fun. Me and Bash were talking about this before you and fellas jumped on the call. And if the world today was like it was when you four guys were roommates, and there was video. No, no, we big problem. We would have a documentary. <laughs> it's, like, it's like when they shut this live record off and all of us are talking, <laughs> the same thing will happen. Big problems because the truth will come out. Guys, let's be real. We had a great time growing up. Iowa City is an unbelievable place to go to school. Um, you know, and you've got a couple animals living together. Some things are bound to happen. Yeah, but it still can't it still can't be the old way, Willie. Really. Just people just gotta shoot straight and 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 not bullshit. That's just how oh, that's why I can't listen. That's why I came on and I didn't go neutral with the Michigan stuff, even though I love Michigan. I came on. I'm a real dude. Everybody knows that. I'm an Iowa guy. I love the Hawkeyes. Um, we don't have any guys at Penn State, so I ain't rooting for Penn State, baby. I'm rooting for Iowa. <laughs> well, hey, let's uh let's when you get in, let's get a margarita. I don't drink, but uh, he gets sure, in I'll at 9 a.m. <laughs> He just said he's the first flight out. Hey, now that Izzy's gone, my plans might change. We'll have a mimosa. Let's go, fellas. Fellas. The only thing I would say about this, fellas, is I'm used to taking on a bunch of guys versus me. But if you want to join, let's rock and roll, (laughs) baby. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. No, it's gonna be awesome. I was messing with David Taylor. I I was messing with David Taylor yesterday. I texted him and I said, Hey, you got a seat for me? And he was being nice to me. And then I said, You know, I'm gonna be wearing Iowa gear. He left me on blank. He didn't reply (laughs) back. David Taylor, I'm coming for you. (laughs) Um, real quick, speaking of Mark Perry, I'm surprised that wasn't a bigger story that Soriano went back to train with Perry in Arizona. You know, so I, I just, there's a girl in Illinois right now, but I guess her dad wants to go up and challenge one of our best girls, right? So he goes on the internet and like tells everybody his plans. And it's like, guys, you don't want to do that. You don't give elite wrestlers a head start, right? You don't give people head starts to jump into your plans, you know? And, um, you know, Mark Berry and Soriano are on the same wavelength, as crazy as it sounds. Yeah. They're, they're, they're both different, right? So it's like they're not going to give someone else an, uh, a, a head start and figuring it out. And also, Mark Berry wants to win. He is not going to brag about grabbing him. He wants to get him, get him better and win and beat Gilman and beat. Oh, yeah. He's, and, he's got you know, he wants to beat, no doubt about He that. wants to do those. You know, they don't want to create a scene right now. They want to create a scene after they win. Um, and you know what? I can't blame him. You know, I like Soriano. He was awesome. Him and Kennedy Blade's relationship is hilarious. If you go back and look at the, the film from Nice, France, um, Kennedy Blades is cornering Soriano the whole tournament. So it's just pretty neat to see Nick, you know, really interact with people. I saw him at Michigan for a year straight, but he really seems at home down there. He has friends. He's interacting. He's so damn focused. He can be yeah, himself. He's down there at Sunkiss, baby. Here we go. He can be himself. Yeah. What, uh, what size is your boy there? Bash wants to send him a Penn State onesie. No, 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 no. That's illegal. <laughs> it's illegal, baby. Be safe, Izzy. Izzy, Izzy we got to get one of your kids to Penn State. The the streak has got to end. All right, got to get tell, an Izzy kid at Penn State. What hey, I say, what I say all the time is this. What I tell people all the time is this. 
you know, Cal's the unbelievable guy, but he knows I'm on the ends over here at Iowa. And I'm not really sure he, um, you know, you know, it's just better business probably to stay away from a guy that's so tight with another guy, because when you recruit a kid, you gotta, you gotta let their coach coach like me, you gotta let them into their program. I gotta know what's going on. I gotta see the ins and outs. I want to learn from Penn state. So right now it's a little tricky, but I will say this guys, I got a group of unbelievable young men right now in the gym. I got some 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds that are coming. And, um, they're open to go where yeah, he's coming. They're they're open to go where <laughs> So we'll see. But you know what? Tomorrow, Penn State, Iowa is going to be awesome for the fans. It's going to be awesome for the people. I'm out, boys. Good to see you yeah. guys. Yeah, I'll dude. see you on the flip side. All right, guys. That's the show. Talk to you guys later. <laughs> and the beat goes on.